Today's session is going to be focused around um, our, the Stay Connected webinar series from SciTech UK and Ireland. And today we're supported by the Trimble Stratus team, who are powered by Propeller, which is now available from SciTech UK and Ireland. My name's Ian Barnes, and as Head of Business, I'm delighted to welcome you to this webinar. So thanks for joining. Um, today, specifically, we're going to be looking at improving progress trackings with drone surveys um, using the Trimble Stratus platform, and also then how UK, Site at UK and Ireland can support your business and your requirements with some of the latest developments. I'm joined today by uh, Jan Walter-Coat, um, who's the Director of European Operations at Propeller, and also uh, Hussam Abdelati, who is the European Sales Executive for Propeller. Jan and the team really are experts within the industry and have seen firsthand how this technology has really caught up with today's expectations and requirements for the everyday and actual practical application perspectives. So he'll be sharing his knowledge um, about how this all comes together to make a more digital work site work more effectively and efficiently for, for our customer base. I do encourage um, any questions you've got, please ask them. That's why we're running these webinars. Um, please add them to the Q&A section within the Zoom platform. As we go, um, we'll answer them or we'll collate things at the end. At the end, we'll run a, Q &A, a further Q&A session for 30 minutes. Um, and I think some of the previous feedback we've held is that um, some people don't feel comfortable or confident to ask questions. What it encourages, there's no daft questions. We're here to support and help. Um, and sometimes by asking that, that question, you think, well, maybe I should know this. Definitely not. Ask the question, we'll answer it. Um, and that also encourages further participation. So it's really, really good when we get that, that interactivity. So now I'm going to hand you over to Jan and Hassan. Um, over to you guys and thank you. All right, great. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Ian. Um, so thanks, uh, everyone, for having me on today. Um, it's great to, um, to be able to speak to so many of you uh, this afternoon. Um, so quick agenda. Um, I'll uh, first uh, illustrate the Trimble and Propeller partnership. Um, we'll go into the evolution of drones over the past years. Um, we'll look at the workflow in the field um, and how you need ground control to get accurate drone data. Um, and we'll look at the return on investment um, and how Trimble Stratus helps you track progress, productivity, quality, cost, and safety. Um, then some more focus on the workflows in the office. Um, so what does Trimble Stratus allow you to do? Um, measuring, collaborating. Um, and then back to Ian for a, a brief discussion of how we integrate with, uh, with the rest of the, of the SciTech portfolio and the other Trimble products there. And after that, Q&A. So again, quick uh, quick intros, uh, just so you understand. So my name is Jan Wouter Kruid, if you wanna hurt your throat. Uh, I'm from the Netherlands, as you may have heard. Um, and I lead the team at Propeller in, uh, in Europe. Uh, Propeller is originally an Australian company, uh, started in 2014, um, and we started operations in Europe in 2018. Um, uh, we're also based in uh, Denver, in, in the USA and the US is our, our biggest market too. So over 2,500 companies use Trimble Stratus uh, to process uh, over 65,000 surveys. So we, we've processed a fair few, fair few surveys since 2014. Um, we're on over 16,000 work sites today in, in, in over 120 countries. And so the Propeller, the company I work for is still separate company from uh, from Trimble that will remain that way uh, but we work very closely with Trimble and uh, so we distribute this product Trimble Stratus through the SciTech uh, network the authorized Trimble dealers. Um, with me on the European team uh, leading our sales um, is Hassan, Hassan Avilari um, and uh, uh, just mentioning uh, who you would uh, be in contact with if you reach out to us. That would be Hussam on the Propeller team and on SciTech, uh, on the SciTech side, uh, the two Stratus specialists are Carl Parsons in, uh, uh, in, in Great Britain uh, and Sean Higgins in Ireland. 
Right. So before we uh, kick off with the content here, I'd like to get uh, some feedback from uh, all of you just to, to understand a bit better um, who's on the um, uh, who's on the other side. And so I'll launch a poll now and invite you to uh, to fill out uh, two questions here. So you should now view uh, these uh, be viewing these um, these questions. First question is: What is the maturity of your drone program? Um, you have none, you're at early stage, um, or you have a mature program. All right, looks like we have most people on no program at all right now. I'll just wait for everyone to fill that out. We're at 67% of the votes right now. All right, well, I'll, I'll end the polling here. It's a pretty clear picture. Um, here we go. I can share the results with you. Um, so by far the majority here um, is, is in the researching phase and, and, and has no program at this stage. That's really exciting to hear. Um, a few with an early program and one with a mature program. Um, that's really great. Um, let me stop sharing results and um, throw one more question at you. And that's, had you heard of Trimble Stratus before this webinar? All right, excellent. So most of uh, most of you are fairly uh, fairly new to the project. Uh, to the project uh, product. Let me share the results there. Yeah, so um, that's great. Um, a lot of uh, fresh uh, fresh interest. Very happy to uh, to see that. So I'll uh, I'll start from um, from the beginning. All right. So looking at it, back at the past couple of years, um, we've seen drones evolve uh, a lot. To be honest, um, back in 2014, 2015, um, as you may know, this was the peak of the of the drone hype, and 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 everyone wanted to have a drone and was excited about them. But really, the expectations were uh, uh, were vastly outliving the capabilities of drones at that point. Um, drones got you a pretty picture, but not too much more. Um, and they were certainly not ready to to be brought onto earth moving sites. Um, in 2016, uh, that changed. Um, ground control became a, a, a bit easier with the introduction of arrow points, amongst others, and I'll speak to that later. It's a product by Propeller. Um, and people got better at doing accurate site measurements and got closer to, um, well, actually using uh, drones as a real surveying tool. Um, but uh, getting maps out of drones is just one thing um, where uh, where we are since 2018 is that drone surveys um, don't just get you a single survey. Um, there are good workflows for uh, comparing work, uh, comparing survey to survey and comparing survey to design. And so um, that's where we are right now, um, where we see significant return on investment um, and um, yeah, I'll tell you a bit more about what workflows are available uh, in, in, in progress tracking with the uh, Trimble Stratus today. So here you see our platform. It's basically a software that runs in your internet browser. And in this software are your surveys or your um, historical surveys. And you can compare them one to the other. Uh, take measurements and get your cut and your fill volumes uh, by just taking very quick measurements. Um, it's very easy to use, really anyone can do it. You don't need uh, a surveyor um, background to, uh, to interrogate the data. And uh, not only uh, the surveys live in the browser, um, also your designs can be uploaded here. And so you can measure through those um, as well. Really easy to use software. Um, and so um, 
why do people buy this? They uh, they buy this uh, mostly. They get started with Stratus to save on data processing time. So uh, besides the software uh, that allows you to um, well interact with your data and share the data with your colleagues, um, we process the drone data for you. And there, by doing that, we take away a lot of the time that our customers uh, traditionally had to invest themselves. Uh, like their surveyor was the only person who could do that probably. Um, and now anyone can just collect the data, upload to, uh, to Tremble Stratus and have the, have the results uh, uh, the next day. Yep, yeah, and so uh, one of our bigger customers in, uh, uh, in Europe is uh, NCC over in Norway. And um, what they really um, appreciate about the product is that it works for them as a single source of truth. And so um, they have the Stratus um, uh, browser open when, uh, uh, when they have a production meeting uh, with their earth moving uh, team and their subcontractors. Um, and it's a single source of truth. Everyone is looking at this very visual um, current status of the site. And uh, everyone, uh, after having a conversation about uh, the picture, walks away with the same impression of, of the site and, uh, and, and the same uh, plan for, uh, well, first the, the same review of what happened last week, but also the same plan for what needs to happen uh, in, in, in the next week. And so, um, yeah, every uh, production meeting, um, they will want to have up-to-date data. And uh, well, as you see here, um, we can deal with very large data sets. Um, as you see on the infra side has, uh, has large data sets and um, we've also worked with um, uh, with one of the teams over at HS2 um, to, um, yeah, to get these very, very long uh, sections uh, into the browser and make them very easy to, uh, to share. All right, so um, all of this happened just in a, in a very short time span, the availability of, of, of this amount of data. And um, we think uh, in, in, the, in the next 10 years, it will only be more and more of this. The amount of data that you will be able to generate on a job site will go through the roof. Um, and surveyors uh, and the people responsible on site for managing the quality of that data, they are just going to be completely uh, you know, washed away by, by the amount of data they have to QA uh, to, um, yeah, to, to make sure the progress tracking is um, is up to spec. And so we gradually see an industry mindset here uh, across the world. Um, maybe we see this first in, uh, uh, um, in, uh, in, in, in forward looking countries in Scandinavia, but uh, we definitely do uh, see, see exactly similar trends in Australia and the US um, and the UK uh, as well. Um, in general, um, the, the, the companies we speak to in earth moving are pulling technology in-house um, and they struggle to sign up on the accuracy, but, but it's, it's, it's their life, but right? they cannot uh, sacrifice on accuracy, so they still need that. And they look for scalable solutions um, and cloud-based cloud solutions uh, like Stratus um, really help out with that. They look for actionable and shareable data. So um, yeah, the, the, the data that they, that they work with needs to be readily usable and, and speak to everyone that, uh, that gets access to it. Um, and they want pretty up-to-date data. So um, more and more um, our customers want, um, want to, to get closer to, to real time. And so they fly their site more frequently so that at least for every production meeting, um, they have they have the latest data to discuss. Right, so accuracy uh, being uh, at the core of everyone's uh, business and at the, the front of the mind of every surveyor, um, I wanted to step through that a bit uh, first. So um, we see uh, sort of a pyramid of accuracy here. Um, when you, at the bottom, just use a, a hobby drone basically with no positional info of, uh, of the data, there's obviously no accuracy. And um, if you only use the geotext, so normal GPS uh, information that the drone may uh, store uh, with, uh, with the, 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 the images of the site, 
um, you'll be at the normal GPS accuracy of around oh, two meters on a good day, um, probably more. Um, if you would um, would use a, a standalone uh, RTK drone, so nowadays there are many RTK drones in the market, um, and if you would use them without any ground control, um, you would uh, um, you would achieve around 10, 10 centimeters accuracy. So um, ground control is really the key to, uh, to unlocking the three centimeter accuracy that most of our customers are looking for when they when they want to do their progress tracking. So um, when you look to drones, um, you're not going to achieve millimeter accuracy. You should expect centimeters accuracy, and that is what um, our customers tell us is 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 all they need um, for their volumes for the cut cut in their fills. And so, um, what does a workflow look like for those of you unfamiliar with um, with with drones? This is probably a good good place to to start. Um, it's a combination of a drone and ground control. So you need these ground control points to tie your drone data, the 3D terrain model that we can make from the 2D drone images. We need to tie that into the coordinate reference system you want to work in. And so we do that through ground control points. Um, we can work with any type of ground control and propeller sells uh, what are, uh, creates what are called arrow points. Um, these are smart ground control points, and I'll discuss them in a bit. You can get them at your local site tech. Um, so you place your ground control points. Uh, you then fly the drone, and you make sure that the ground control is in view of, uh, uh, um, uh, of, of, of the drone camera throughout the flight. After that, you upload all of your ground control um, information and your drone data, and uh, we go to work and we just do the processing for you and the quality assurance. When we are certain that, um, and that the quality is at the sniff, and we do all kinds of checks, like uh, ensuring historical consistency. Um, we run all kinds of automated and manual uh, quality assurance. When we are uh, perfectly sure that the data is as it should be, then we push it to your portal and you can you get notified and you can collaborate on that with, with the team on site. Yeah, so these arrow points, as I mentioned, they're basically uh, smart ground control points, right? So a, a, a non-smart ground control point is basically a sprayed X on the ground that you survey with a GPS rover. Um, the slightly smarter version of that is, is this arrow point that has a GPS antenna inside and literally one button to operate it. Um, it has a solar cell and a battery as well. Um, you push the button before you, um, before you fly to start logging. At the end of the flight, you uh, push the button again, and the arrow point starts looking for a Wi-Fi connection to upload its uh, GPS log to uh, to our servers, and um, yeah, we then process the ground control for you. So anyone can do this. Again, you don't need a surveying grade to be able to do that. Uh, the intern can do this on on day one. And so the easiest workflow that combines with these arrow points. Normally we sell arrow points in a pack of 10. And so if you have a non-RTK drone, um, you can work with 10 arrow points that you distribute along the perimeter of your site with probably a couple in the middle of your site and that's your ground control done. Um, still uh, ask that you uh, cover the site, you walk the complete site. Um, and the easier way that we have available today is working with just one arrow point in combination with this particular drone that's the, the DJI Phantom 4 RTK um, and in that workflow um, which uh, um, in terms of cost uh, is around uh, 10,000 10, uh, euro so it's what 9,000 or nine and a half uh, pounds sterling um, you have uh, you achieve three centimeters accuracy with only one ground control point, only one uh, arrow point, and so that's the the, the most affordable and, and, and most effective way of setting up your uh, um, uh, your data capture workflow today. All right. So after you've uploaded, um, what are you able to do with Trimble Stratus? You're closing the information gap between the office and your team on site. So today they will do a lot of travel, a lot of communication, be on the phone, share files, and often also share paperwork. Um, if you had that shared source of truth, 
um, as is Kindle Stratus. You can connect the home office and the work site. Um, and you can even connect uh, your contractors and your and your client if you if you would want to. You can uh, set the permissions um, in a way that works well for your operations. And you can have people across what they are allowed to see and not across what you don't want them to see. All right, so um, today, um, what does it look like data across teams on a on a typical earth moving site? Um, we see many data inputs, like a growing amount of data input coming into um, the surveyor on site. Um, and that surveyor is, is always the processing and, and quality assurance bottleneck um, for making sure that data is, is, is usable. Um, the surveyor will put that in a big uh, uh, data stockpile that is probably only accessible to the site engineers. And so um, the data gets siloed in that stockpile and the site engineer uh, is the only one with visibility. So what do we want that to look like and where do we help our customers move? It's more, more like this, um, an increased amount of data inputs that are still supervised by the site surveyor, um, but not necessarily in as much detail um, as, uh, as in the previous scenario. Um, uh, the site surveyor still is across all of the, the, the quality of, uh, of, of the data, but with the data ending up in this uh, single uh, data management platform, um, we can then give access to many more stakeholders. So field teams, engineers, even project managers and other stakeholders can, can interact with this data if they need to, or they can just view the data if that's all they need to do. Right, so who are the, uh, the industries that, uh, that we speak to? Um, first and foremost, it's civil construction. Uh, this is where uh, uh, the majority of our customers is today. But we have many good customers as well in uh, in mining and aggregates. Um, and for each of these uh, industries, we have very specific workflows. Um, and an exciting emerging uh, market for us is uh, is waste management, um, where drones are really a very nice addition to um, to the limited surveying uh, uh, technology that is uh, that is on site today. Um, and for each of those industries. They're answering the same sort of key questions on site with with our platform, and it's sort of the same uh, the same kinds of questions that you try to answer with machine control, but obviously on a very different uh, side of the technology spectrum. And so it's questions uh, around progress. So where am I up to now? What have we done last week? Um, uh, wh wh where are we today? Um, what needs to happen in the next week? And productivity. How fast is it, get it getting done? Are we, um, are, are we on track? Do we have the right number of machines? Quality, uh, am I matching the plan? Um, what parts of the site are, are on grade and uh, which, which parts are not? Um, obviously cost always is a key factor, mainly uh, can I know more for less? So can I save on my uh, surveying? Uh, um, can, I, can I use my surveying man hours as effective as possible? And then obviously safety. So can I reduce risks? Can I keep people out of harm's way, away from the machines, offside as much as possible, um, and uh, uh, just let the machines run the site and uh, keep the surveyors um, away from them? And so how often do you need to answer those questions? Well, that, happen, that depends on what industry you are in. So if you're in aggregates, uh, probably by the end of the month, um, by the end of every month, you want uh, an overview of your uh, of your production uh, and of your uh, uh, the value in your stockpiles. When you're in mining, especially if you're mining uh, precious metals, you there's a ferocious appetite for data. <laughs> uh, our customers fly daily. Some of our customers even multiple times per day. Um, but but that's that's very specific and, uh, and probably not a very European scenario. Um, then in waste, we see sort of the same quarterly and monthly is uh, is, is the typical frequency uh, there. And in civil construction, it's it's once or twice a week, depending on the activity on site. Um, uh, uh, the production meeting happens happens once a week, and sometimes multiple times per week. The the, the team needs uh, up to date data, um, uh, and also be able to capture a visual of the complete site at a specific time in between different phases of the work. Right. 
So this is why the customers come to us. Uh, they, they get more data with uh, drones, drone surveys and with Stratus faster and cheaper. Um, so yeah, the drone covers in, uh, in, in, in 45 minutes, um, uh, you know, is able to create a point cloud and a terrain model of, on a larger site. Uh, uh, it, may take, uh, it may take a surveyor or a team of surveyors uh, uh, easily a day to, to walk the complete site and to get uh, sparser information uh, and that, than the drone would. Right, and so um, we have very simple tools to inter uh, interrogate that, uh, that data. Uh, basically only three tools. There's a point tool uh, that allows you to, uh, to check an elevation history or flag a safety hazard, make an annotation, basically. Um, there's a line tool that allows you to do cross sections, measure distances, uh, road grades, uh, elevation differences, slopes, things like that. And then there's a polygon tool that allows you to uh, measure areas and measure volumes. So this is how you compare, you get your, uh, your cut fill volumes, you compare to your design, compare survey to survey, and you do your earthworks progress tracking. Uh, and of course your stockpiles. And so, yeah. With these three tools, you can you can go beyond stockpiles, which is where most people start when they think about drones. They think about, well, I can measure my stockpiles with that. I can find out the volume, um, and if I know the density, I can also find out uh, the, the the number of tons and maybe even the value in it. Um, but Stratus goes well beyond stockpiles. Um, we allow you to, um, uh, to 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 really track progress and measure a lot more uh, on site. So easy to use uh, uh, measurement templates, uh, easy analytics, um, a 3D overlay um, that uh, so you can compare to your line work, your data, your surface designs, cloud-based so you can access it anywhere. Um, we have humans in the loop of the processing so uh, you can rest assured that the, the, the quality there is up to spec. Um, it lives in the cloud, but uh, if you want to take your data out of the cloud, you can do that whenever you want in the formats that you need. So you can simply download or share uh, a push your files into Trimble Connect uh, and, and take them elsewhere from there. Um, and you can get them in different formats, so different densities for um, for triangular uh, for mesh files, uh, different um, coordinate systems um, depending on what you're using. Uh, yeah, so our data turnaround uh, is um, uh, is overnight. Um, uh, we we sign off on 24 hours, but typically do it in uh, quite a bit uh, less. And our our folks, our our, our support team, is available 24/7. So um, we invest quite a bit because this technology is so new. We do a lot of handholding. That's how we make our customers successful, and we are we are quite happy to do that because that's just how we become successful with this product. Um, we invest a lot in training and in reactive support. We're, uh, we're available 24-7 to, to, to help you um, get, get the data you need. Um, as I mentioned, we have two data capture solutions. So the PPK workflow with the DGI Phantom 4 RDK and the arrow points if, if, if that's what you, what you want to use. All right, so Getting towards the end here, um, the takeaway is, is what gets measured gets managed. Um, and um, yeah, that's what, what Trimble Stratus allows you to do. And so this is a pretty clear slide uh, showing you uh, the difference uh, between uh, someone equipped with occasional data and, and someone equipped with frequent actionable data um, and what effect that has on unplanned costs. So when you have um, those frequent updates on your site, you don't rely on say a manned aerial survey twice a year, um, but you have a weekly update that allows you to course correct. Um, your, uh, your unscheduled costs will be, uh, will, will be much lower. It's uh, uh, when you're a typical example, when your subcontractor is working to the wrong uh, design file and uh, you find out six weeks in, um, that is uh, a lot of uh, a lot of cost right there and then to fix, and uh, earth earth moving companies around the globe go bust because of that type of reasons, or they have disputes with their with their contractors uh, because of that reason. Um, and uh, if if you course correct, if you have up to date data more frequently, 
uh, this is the typical sort of thing that you can avoid. So customers come to Trimble Stratus to save on surveillance cost, um, but they stay uh, and they expand because they notice that they get a lot better grip on their uh, on their earth moving projects. All right, that's that's my last slide. Uh, Ian, uh, back uh, back over to you. Thank you, and that's absolutely brilliant. Um, and I suppose um, it just goes to show. I think I really like some of the the slides within the, in this pack because your statement of um, what gets known gets managed. I think is very indicative of today's marketplace where. Um, more and more the thirst for data and progress tracking is seen throughout all industries and avenues um, and this is really why it's kind of exciting to see so many people join the call today uh, to see some of this activity it really does show the general interest in pulling all this um, data together and capturing it in one place um, you know if we look at this exciting a new you know opportunity for sites at UK and Ireland that we're launching we're going to be delivering this product and um, this service from both um, the data processing and also, you know, if necessary for those who don't have the capabilities, even though it's quite simple, to offer the flights and even the consultation in terms of looking at sites and understanding what's needed. It really does complement the entire SciTech and Trimble portfolio of product and survey um, equipment, you know, with a field to finish solution. Um, you know, as Jan highlighted, I think, towards the beginning of the presentation, um, technology is that enabler that's ensuring people have got data around them, both empirical um, for tracking, but I think more and more with that thirst for knowledge, the visual impact of progress tracking is, is so very, very important when it becomes a single source of truth. Um, you know, and then when you tie all those different aspects of the project and, and how that comes together with the input factors of, you know, the machines and um, with machine control data, with the site positioning equipment, with, you know, surveyor equipment, and then also the platforms such as Trimble Business Center, you get to understand how all data is being managed and making it much, much easier to do um, and provide customers with rich, richer environments of information and, 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 and knowledge. Um, you know, that supports the tracking of progress and day-to-day -day activity. Um, and then with that, it comes straight back onto what you know you can manage. Um, and with that knowledge, we can then get accuracy of, of jobs, improved cost effectiveness, um, and how that really goes to help customers deliver more profitable solutions. So the investment of the equipment or the services that SciTech offer and that you know are supported by Trimble really makes myself and, and our customers more and more aware of it's a worthwhile investment. Um, and I'm hoping that what you can see from the webinar um, is that using drones really supports closing the information gaps or catch points with that quality information and also the speed that data enables you to make that, that, that the, the crucial decisions um, to, to help drive your businesses forward. And what I'd really, really encourage, we can't sometimes get across how exciting or how important and useful this technology can be. Um, reach out to SITEC UK and Ireland, reach out to the guys at Trimble to, so we can get in front of you, whether it's physical right now is a little bit of a difficulty, depending where you are in the world um, with current COVID situations. But we're happily getting in front of you with physical product, with um examples of the software we're going to be launching some great um software trials um in the coming weeks where you can get on to use trimble business center but where we can get in front of you to show how technology works or put you in contact with our customer base who really are great advocates for how much technology saves them and makes their lives easier so please reach out to us ask us the questions that you may have to understand more or book an appointment with one of our fantastic sales reps or with one of our drone specialists where we can show you this technology making people's lives much much easier now i know there's a lot to kind of take in and um, so if anybody's got any questions that we can answer through that please let me know um, we've got a couple of questions that have come in live and um, so we've got one question of uh, mr howard tinker um, is the data processing hosted in europe is the first question 
So the, um, the post system itself, uh, so we run on, uh, uh, on uh, Amazon Web Services, um, as do many, uh, many of the world's online businesses, including stock exchanges and militaries. So it's a safe environment to, to, to work in. Um, the first thing uh, happens in the uh, Asia Pacific uh, uh, region, so close to our uh, Australian engineering headquarters. And um, uh, this, the storage is in, um, uh, in, in, in the Dublin data center. So, um, yeah, in, in, in REST, your data is uh, close to, uh, to where you are and is on, uh, on European soil. Okay, great. Thanks for that. Um, next question we've got, uh, can anybody clarify what file formats we can export on? Um, is it surfaces, TTM, DXF? Um, yeah, all of the uh, uh, all of the above. Um, you can uh, export uh, TTM surfaces, uh, DXFs. Uh, you can export the terrain model uh, as a geotiff. Um, you can export georeference JPEGs if if you are looking for a smaller, uh, more convenient background map. Um, yeah, there's a there, there's a whole host of uh, of different options there. Okay, great stuff. And I suppose the next question we've got off um, Paulina. Um, is how big an area, and um, this is a great question, how big an area can one of the Trimble aero ground control points cover? Uh, good, good question. Uh, it depends on the, um, uh, the drone you're using with that. And so um, with, the, uh, with a set of, of 10 aero points and a non-RTK drone, um, you would cover um, Top of my mind, I think 50, uh, 50 60 hectares is, um, um, is, is where you'd be. Um, and it's the same with, um, uh, with the PPK workflow, but then with a single ground control point. Um, so you can, um, uh, you can extend that if you want. If you're working on a particularly large site, uh, you can just uh, use, uh, use more ground control if that's what you need. Um, in that case, the PPK workflow with a limited number of ground control points is, is probably the way you want to go because it's just a, a lot more convenient. Okay, that's, that's a great answer um, for that. Uh, Paulina, I hope that answers your question. And I suppose one of the things where SciTech can, can support, deliver that, that answer as well is, you know, we will quite happily come out and support you with the consultation to, to look at the site, to understand your needs and the data you need to capture, whether it's on a, on a daily, weekly, monthly, or annual view uh, and, and provide you with that level of understanding. So I hope that answers that question. Next question, we've got brilliant interaction today. Thanks everybody. Um, how do we structure costs for processing and support? So I think I can answer some of this, but Jan, please um, support me in this. Um, in terms of the, the physical service side of things that's as a SciTech service offering, we um, can support uh, in terms of pricing on flights, on consultation by the hour, or on the number of um, specific support you need. And then in terms of data, Jan, over to you. Yeah, sure. So the, um, the way we offer the, the product is uh, in, in, in the form of annual licenses. And with the annual, annual license, you buy a certain amount of, uh, of, of processing credits that basically translate to a number of processing jobs. Um, that's a great place to start. Uh, it basically allows you to scale with the number of flights you do. Um, and if you get to uh, a, a larger stage, so obviously the cost uh, per unit uh, goes down as, as your volume increases. So the, the cost per survey basically gets better and better uh, as with any SaaS business model um, when, when, when your volume goes up. And so um, for larger uh, companies um, or, or just big sites that, uh, that want to fly a lot and often. Um, we also offer unlimited packages in different shapes and forms, and that really drives the cost uh, down a lot more than just the more you fly, the, the, the cheaper it gets. So um, yeah, happy to take the, the, the pricing discussion uh, uh, offline, yeah. Yeah, and I suppose an, another one with that, I think between SciTech and also um, the Propeller team, 
what we're aiming at here is is a, is a supportive consultation sale and um, so to to help work with you to understand your specific needs so it can be tailored to support um, your actual site and needs okay um, next question of uh, mr ian jones can we use other drones or just the phantom um for rtk so again, Jan, you're probably best to answer this. I know that obviously you can use many different types of drone. It's, I suppose the richness of the, the data you get from the RTK is what really helps um, with the, the photography, et cetera, yeah? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, the, um, uh, the, the platform is, is, is drone, uh, drone agnostic. Any drone will do, any uh, ground control will do. Um, the, the, the simple fact remains, of course, that good data in is good data out, uh, and the opposite also applies. So, if you, um, uh, as long as you use uh, a, a drone with a, with a good quality camera, which that also depends on a couple of factors, um, but um, basically we don't we don't force you to use any type of drone or any type of of, of ground control. We uh, we can we can recommend uh, uh, we have a list of recommended drones if, uh, if, if that helps. Okay. Um, last question we've got so far, but please keep them coming. It's really good interaction. Um, can we provide a monthly license? So licenses work per um, uh, work per year, um, but um, yeah, we can we we can look at different ways to uh, to structure that. Um, normally, we would um, we would invest a lot uh, uh, up, up front. And so um, going month by month is probably not the, the best way to do it. Uh, the, the, the first few weeks are uh, just yeah, getting across the, the first hurdles with, uh, with customers. And so we ask commitment for, for a full year. Okay. But as, as well, I think one thing to add on to that as well, um, Jan, uh, from our conversations, because it's something that we've we've just explored in more detail, is that you know the, whilst the data sits in there, the data is free to download. So if you don't use it from one year to the next, you can access all that data and uh, and get access to that. Yeah. 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 For sure. Okay. And we've had a question on the chat from Paul. Um, uh, thanks for the webinar. You're more than welcome. This is what um, we love to do. And um, working with as an with working for an earthworks contractor, I need uh, to break down progress quants for various materials. Uh, can as built data be merged in say top of class two so then you can report class two fill only for example or will this give bulk quantity only? I think again Jan um, I'm able to answer the question in, in that as you're building up your program of data you're able to load in your different material types. Is that, that accurate? That, that, that is very true. Um, so um, you can build a materials library in uh, in Trimble Stratus and assign uh, material types to different stockpiles. And so we will, in your report, um, you will see uh, the, the the volume um, plus the amount of tons, the mass uh, plus the, uh, uh, the 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 value. If you also specify per ton, um, that's how you can uh, can set up your uh, uh, your quantities in more detail in your report. Well, so um, towards the end of the, the the totals per material type. Yeah, and and again, Paul, to add to that as well, um, what we can do is work with you to to show you how to use the software so that you get maximum use out of this as well. Um, next question um, from a Mr. Smith. Um, can we stitch a new survey into an older survey? That's a very good question. I'm going to answer. A new survey that. into an older survey, That's like correct. a like a, a segment survey, basically. I cannot answer that question, Jan. It's just literally, <laughs> can we stitch a new survey into an older survey? Right. So, um, what um, uh, what what you today you cannot. Um, uh, make a composite survey uh, if, 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 if that's uh, what, uh, uh, what's being asked here. Um, we, it is something we, um, we are uh, uh, looking at, uh, but today um, Stratus is, is, is a very easy to use tool built around progress tracking, but we don't, um, 
we, we, we don't think that anything in any, should be able to be done inside Stratus. So um, some tasks are just better done in Triple Business Center or, or, or some other uh, product um, specifically design uh, tasks. Um, as you may know, Triple Business Center has a, 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 an enormous amount of options there and we, um, we couldn't dream to, to replicate all of that uh, in the browser. Um, so there's always this, this, um, uh, yeah, the, the need for multiple, um, uh, multiple other softwares uh, alongside Stratus. We just make progress tracking a lot easier and a lot more um, accessible for, for everyone on the site. So Neil's added to that. Um, so if we had a full site survey, can you merge into a new working area? But again, Jan, just to be clear on that, what you're saying from and the feedback is really that's best to be handled within TBC, Trimble Business Center, or similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can simply export as uh, as a DXF or as a TTM, um, work uh, or push it to Trimble Connect if you don't want to download. Um, then work uh, work on it in Trimble Business Center and re-upload a um, uh, uh, yeah uh, uh, an edited file uh, back into Stratus. Uh, that happens a fair bit. A lot of our customers do that and. Um, these things you don't have to do really in Stratus because they um, they, they tend to be um, like occasional. It's 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 not one of the typical workflows. But I do understand that that is something that would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, another question just come in. Fantastic, this guys. Really, thank you. Um, can we create cross sections? Well, excuse me. Can we create cross sections such as OGL versus design? Yeah, for sure. Um, it's really quick and easy to create a cross section in uh, Stratus. Uh, you can just click and double click with the line tool and that's your cross section. Uh, then you add the designs and the surveys that you want to add uh, to the graph. Uh, nor, like by default, we show the latest design and the latest survey. Um, but if it's the OGL you want to look at, um, you can just click and, and, and have that shown and you can remove anything you don't want to see. So yeah, it's really easy for anyone to, to, to create a cross section like that. If you would want to use an existing uh, line segment and use that as the basis for the measurements. So I don't know, stations along a, a, a highway, for example, um, where you have the center line and you want to see the cross section all these perpendicular uh, um, uh, stations, fairly typical application. Um, you just uh, select all of those um, uh, uh, all of those pieces of line work in your design, and you can do a batch conversion. So you have all of the um, uh, yeah, all of the cross sections along the uh, 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 along the linear project. Okay, fantastic. So great interaction of everybody. If anybody's got any more questions, that would be. Great. Um, I'll just pretty much sign. Oh, sorry. Can we? Um, another question off Paul. Can we? Can volumes be broken up into zones? I believe they can. Um, yeah. If you um, um, again, if you have a design file, this is quite straightforward. Um, so, if your design file has these closed uh, line segments, um, you can use those and convert them into volume measurements. For example. Um, that's a very clean way between changes in a new road. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, if you have that, uh, if you have the changes set up in uh, in your design file, um, you can convert each of them to say a progress measurement, um, and 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 a, a, our Earthworks progress template will have uh, three measurements. It will show you uh, the latest survey compared to the previous survey. Cut a fill on that. Um, it will show you um, the latest survey compared to uh, the, the latest design file and show you cut and fill to the latest design file. And then um, basically a burn down chart for the progress, um, showing you uh, across your surveys uh, how you're trending towards uh, hitting the design. So that's a, a burn down chart that, that tends towards zero. Okay, that's the question. Yeah. Thing. I'm just making sure we've, I've not missed anything or any more questions come in. Um, no, I mean, I think, obviously, keep asking the questions. Uh, I'll do the normal sign-off right now. Um, but one thing I'd, I'd like to say is that some of the feedback we get within these sessions really helps us understand the, 
the excitement around the industry, around technology, and what we're doing is the right thing. Um, you know, by the activity, we know um, that drone software solutions and the support that SciTech and you know Propeller can can uh, do is really needed in the marketplace. So, thank you for for that interaction and thanks for attending. I hope it super. Once again, thank you everybody for joining us today. Please join us again um, next week. 